Hello everyone, and welcome to our virtual kinder concert. My name is Matthew, and I am the person who usually conducts the concerts. Today, I am going to be the narrator for this concert. You are going to hear some music, and we are going to talk about the patterns and forms that we can find in music and the orchestra. You just listened to something called an overture. An overture is an introduction to a longer piece of music. What we just played was the overture, or introduction, to an opera called The Barber of Seville. An opera is a long piece of music that tells a story through singing. If what we just played was the introduction to an opera, do you think it would be played at the beginning or the end of the opera? The beginning, of course. About 300 years ago, when operas were starting to become popular, someone decided that there should be music at the beginning, before people started singing, to introduce the crowd to the show. Now, almost all operas have an overture. An overture is an important part of the form of an opera. It gives the opera a special shape that is different from other types of classical music. The type of classical music that is most common for the orchestra is something called a symphony. A symphony is a piece of music that is divided into sections that we call movements. Most symphonies have four movements. This pattern of using four movements in a symphony was created by a composer named Joseph Haydn. Haydn wrote a lot of symphonies. Can you guess how many? Believe it or not, he wrote 104. In most of the symphonies he wrote, he stuck to his pattern of having four movements. But in his 60th symphony, Haydn broke the rule and used a different pattern. Instead of four movements, he wrote six. Sometimes composers break away from patterns to surprise an audience. In the last movement of Haydn's 60th symphony, he also has the strings tune their instruments again, something that is usually done only at the beginning of the first movement, and another way in which Haydn breaks his own pattern. That was the sixth movement of Haydn's 60th symphony. Next time you are listening to a piece of music, listen to see if it follows a pattern or breaks away and does something different. Before we learn about more patterns and forms, let's learn about the different instruments that make up the orchestra. Instruments in the orchestra are grouped into families based on things they have in common. The musicians playing instruments in the same family sit near each other when playing music in the orchestra. The first family we are going to meet is 
the string family. The instruments of the string family are the violin, the viola, the cello, and the double bass. All these instruments have a lot in common. They make sound by vibrating a string and have the same basic shape. If you want to learn more about the string family, check out the first video of our Music From Home series on YouTube. We group instruments into families because of the things they have in common. Music can also be grouped together based on things that it has in common, such as the way it sounds or how fast it goes. When we do this, we call it a section of music. Everything in the section goes together. We can label a section based on where it is in the music, like the overture. The overture is an introduction, so it happens at the beginning. We can also label a section using a letter, like A or B. Let's talk about a specific piece of music so you can understand. Ponchielli's Dance of the Hours starts with a very fun melody. Da 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 da, 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 dee da dee da dee da dee da 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 da. This melody repeats several times, so we call the beginning of this piece the A section. After repeating the melody a few times, the piece changes and we hear a very different melody. Sounds different, right? So, since it is different, we call this second section the B section. After the B section, the piece plays the A section again. When we put those three sections together, we get a pattern, A, B, A. We call this pattern the form of the piece. The A, B, A form is what we call ternary form. While you listen to the piece at home, listen for the change from the A section to the B section, and then back again. Wave your hands when you hear the change. Did you hear all of the different sections? It is fun to find patterns in music. Let's look at our next family of instruments and see if we can find why they are grouped together. Our next family of instruments is the woodwind family. The instruments in this family are the flute, the oboe, the clarinet, 
and the bassoon. It is harder to tell why these instruments are in a family because they look pretty different from one another. So, why are they all called woodwinds? Well, they are made of wood, or used to be made of wood, and the wind part is because the musician blows his or her air into the instrument to make a sound. You can learn more about our woodwind instruments in the third video from our Music From Home series on YouTube. We are going to listen to another piece that has sections, just like Dance of the Hours. This is the prelude to the opera Carmen. A prelude to an opera is another word for overture. It comes at the beginning of the opera, before people start singing. Something else really cool happens in this piece of music. Even though the sections have different melodies, and some of them are loud and some of them are soft, the tempo doesn't change. This means that the music never speeds up or slows down. You can tap your shoulders on each beat, and they will stay the same speed the whole time, even though the melody is changing. Let's practice tapping a steady beat. Here we go. One, two, three, and... Great! Now, as we listen to the prelude to Carmen, keep tapping your shoulders and feel how the tempo stays the same, even though the melodies change. Did you all feel how the beat stayed the same? Pretty cool, isn't it? The next family of instruments we are going to meet is the brass family. The instruments in the brass family are the trumpet, the French horn, the trombone, and the tuba. These brass instruments are made of a metal called brass, and that is how the instrument family got its name. You can learn more about the brass family in the fourth video of our Music From Home series. Which of those instruments was the shortest? The trumpet. How about which was the longest? 
That would be the tuba. In music, we have notes that are different lengths, just like the instruments you have seen today. In the second movement of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, Beethoven uses the same pattern of short and long notes over and over again. We call this a rhythmic ostinato. Can you say ostinato? Beethoven uses this pattern of notes long, short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, long. Can you all say the pattern with me? Ready? Here we go. Long, short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, long. Very good. Listen for this pattern as we listen to this movement. It gets passed around the orchestra to different instruments but the pattern stays the same. You can learn more about this piece of music in the sixth video of our Music From Home series. We have one more instrument family to meet. It is the percussion family. Instruments in the percussion family include anything that is shaken or hit with a mallet, stick, hand, or each other. This family is known for keeping the beat like in the piece from Carmen we listened to earlier. It includes instruments like drums, marimbas, maracas, and timpani. You can learn more about the percussion family in the fifth video of the Music From Home series. Today, we learned about a lot of patterns we can find in the orchestra. A symphony is made up of four parts called movements, 
And sometimes composers will break from that pattern to surprise an audience. Within a piece of music, we can hear sections that sound similar and sections that are different. This creates the form of a piece of music. We can tap along to the beat of a piece of music to find out if it has a steady beat or not and listen for patterns in the rhythms of the notes. I want to thank you all for listening. We enjoyed finding patterns with you and grouping instruments of the orchestra into families. Before we end, we have one more musical selection to listen to. This is the Gypsy Baron Overture by Johann Strauss Jr. In this piece, you will hear all the instruments of the orchestra. You will hear short sounding notes and long sounding notes, high notes and low notes. You will hear different melodies and patterns of notes repeated throughout. The music will get loud and soft and the tempo will change quite often. This is a fun piece that you could dance to if you want it. While we play, sway where you are sitting so you can feel and hear all the fun patterns and changes in this piece. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed our virtual concert and hope that you will come to hear the Canton Symphony Orchestra again soon.